How's it going, guys? And welcome back to another JHR review. And this last week, I went to a festival, it's the Asian American Expo, which is kind of a conglomerate of uh, all of the different Asian cultures and an anime convention, kind of all packed into one. And I came across a table, then it was kind of selling a lot of different interesting things. And I saw this thing being demonstrated. It's a amazing revolution. It is a magnetic kind of levitation device, and it's really interesting. So I went ahead and picked one up. And if we go ahead and move on to the side, it says, no batteries required, and it turns perpetually with one twist. So let's go ahead and open this guy up and see what this is all about, because this is really up my alley. So this is what the inside packaging looks like. Let's go ahead and slide the box off. Looks as though I was holding it upside down. It's kind of cool, it comes in this little tiny fold of cardboard. Let's set that down right there. And it comes with some kind of, uh, kind of plastic sheet in here. I'm not sure where it goes. So this is the actual device, and I think this is what has magnets in it. I believe we insert this right here, or maybe it goes in this direction. I probably should look at the picture first. Hold on. So it looks as though the piece of plastic goes the pointy way up first. Let's go ahead and slide it in there. There we go. I put the little tiny plastic part in there, and I guess we just figure out the center of gravity for this. Whoa, look at this. So it's not touching anything. It's just barely balanced against this piece of plastic on the back, and we're supposed to be able to rotate it. There we go. I went ahead and started to rotate it, and it's just moving. There's absolutely nothing underneath this right now. It's just 100% levitating on this axis with these magnets. That is insane. I love levitation toys. And see if we can move this a little bit as it's uh, spinning. So you can see right down there, there's absolutely nothing touching this. But yeah, this thing is really interesting on how it rotates. It has a little bit of a wobble to it too. But I really like how it has like this kind of black and white fluctuation as it spins. It's very interesting. What would be really cool is if this had like uh, LEDs on it. That'd be really interesting to see as it spun. There we go. Look how fast this thing is spinning. It's perfectly balanced now. That is so neat. I'm going to be really careful as I try to rotate this again because if you rotate it too much, it will uh, pop off its little um, axis and connect to the bottom base. And it says it's supposed to perpetually kind of spin. I'm not really too sure how long it would actually spin for, but uh, it's definitely a very cool desk toy to have or something to bring maybe for show and tell. Very, very nice. Definitely could see it uh, if I had an office job just spinning it and kind of maybe staring at it to, I don't know, find my muse. But yeah, today I have some more Japanese puzzle erasers from Daiso Japan. And these are also manufactured by Iwako. And these are an assortment of different uh, Asian foods. This is a Chinese food, and this is uh, Japanese festival food. So without further ado, let's go ahead and unpackage these. I actually had a subscriber let me know, which is kind of funny, that you can actually open these via the pull tab at the bottom. And then they just slide right out. All those times I was using dangerous sharp objects when I just needed to peel it off. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in on this. Oh, so this looks really good. Um, I'm not going to know the name of a lot of these, but I believe this is um, octopus balls. And that's, uh, that's what they're filled with. 
I believe so. I had these at a ramen place down in San Diego, and they had this thing where basically there was one that was full of a big ball of wasabi, and you weren't sure which one, you know, what person at your table was going to get it. And I got it, and I really like wasabi, so I was like, wow, there's a lot of wasabi in this, and no one told me that that's the ball. So, yeah, I kind of just liked it. Anyways, let's go ahead and see what comes apart on here. So the cool thing about these ones is all of the different portions of the erasers actually come apart. So as you see, we pulled this part apart. And then this tiny little shell right here also comes off. And then the actual balls come off as well. And then this is the little kind of paper looking plate. And then we also can put this back in. And then this will lay back on top. And what's really cool is this all just kind of like lays down into here. And then these little tiny pegs actually will hold the entire thing together. I really love the engineering job of these things. I always say that. Very nice. And if we look at this one right here, this kind of looks like a uh, thing of ramen noodles or maybe uh, maybe like a curry noodle. It looks really good. I believe right up here is um, a little bit of kimchi. And I'm not sure what part of this comes off. So it looks as though this one does. It did not look like it would come off at all, honestly. And then that slides back in. And I'm assuming it separates in one large piece. No! Guys, look at this. The actual little tiny vegetable looking things at the bottom were separate pieces. I was almost 100% sure, based on how tight-knit this looked, that this was all a single piece but that all separates right there. How cool is that? That's a, one reason I really love these things is that sometimes you just don't expect. Also, it really makes me hungry. Let's go ahead and set that down. And now this one, I have no idea what it's called. So if you guys know, let me know in the uh, comments below. I actually can probably pull this stick out of here. There we go. And then it looks as though it peels apart into multiple different pieces. Oh. Oh, look at that. Little tiny grooves fit right into here. And then it pushes back together. And we can slide the stick back in. Very cool, very interesting. And it still looks good, even though I have no idea what it is. Now let's go ahead and look at the Chinese food erasers. Go ahead and peel this off the back. So right off the bat, I really, really like this. Primarily because there's just so much eraser based on, like, the other ones that we've seen. Most of them are relatively smaller, but this is just, like, so substantial for, like, gripping and whatnot. So right inside of here we have some kind of, um, what looks to be a dough kind of, uh, pastry looking dumpling almost. I'm sure that these come apart somehow too, but I'm not gonna attempt that because they're very small. And it comes in some kind of basket looking thing actually. Very interesting. And then these right here, I know what these are. These are bao. And these are like dumplings filled with different types of meats or vegetables. And let's see if we can get these actually out of here. It's kind of hard to pull based on their size. Come on. There we go. If we zoom in right here, you can see they actually put the detail on the lettuce, which I'm always really impressed with. And it actually pulls out just like that. You can pop that back in. And then this is what the actual bow look like. Really making me hungry. I'm a really big fan of bow, actually. I'll go ahead and slide that in. And then the last thing right here, I'm going to go here, 
is what looks to be a thing of dumplings. So I'm assuming this entire pack right here is full of dumplings. And it looks as though the, yep, the top right here actually comes off. It's pretty cool. And we can just slide this back on. And then it also comes on the actual plate as well. Very interesting, very neat. Let's go ahead and collect all of these down here. And zoom in real quick. And then place them accordingly. So these were all of the erasers that we unpacked today. I want to pick some more of these up this week. What do you guys think? I know you guys really like these Japanese puzzle erasers, and I very much like seeing the different ones that I'm able to find. But yeah, liquid hourglasses. I reviewed many of them on YouTube as what started off as just an interesting, cheap novelty I found, though it turned into this fascination with many people, including myself. I asked myself the other day, where did the idea come from, these interesting sensory pleasing mixtures of oil and water? Well, I researched and I didn't find much, but hourglasses in general have been found since the 8th century. So let's take a look at this one. How's it going guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. And today we have something really interesting. We have another liquid hourglass and this one has an actual logo on it and it's not on the outside, it's actually on the inside. Not only that, but this liquid hourglass is different than the other ones. It has a similar function as this one is a flat style hourglass if we turn it to the side right here. But this one has two different colors in it and they've decided to include glitter in this one. So this one actually has glitter inside of it. As you can see right here, we have a bunch of uh, different colors going on. So we have a very light pink and a very light yellow. It's kind of hard to distinguish them because the oils, once they kind of spread out a little bit, they're a little bit less distinguished in color. But as you can see, there's glitter floating around in the water. Do you see that? All around this area right there, which is really neat. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my LEDs and see how it looks. And you can really see in there that glitter is just like really sparkling and it really gives like, rather than it kind of being an empty void where the oil kind of falls down, you get all of these nice little sparkles kind of making the entire thing kind of like a really nice thing to look at. It's kind of like a really nice mix of pastel colors. Uh, it's easier to see it in real life, but it's kind of harder to see it on camera. It's very interesting though. And I really like the flat style. If you look at it from the side, you can still see them coming down, but kind of as a, uh, little kind of discs as you can see. It's very interesting. This is a very satisfactory kind of little desk toy. It does look like this one has a little bubble trapped at the top, but that's actually just kind of interesting in itself. You ever been in the shampoo aisle as a kid and turn the see-through shampoo bottles upside down and watch the bubbles go to the other side? I love doing that as a kid. All right, let's go ahead and uh, turn this upside down again, but let's go ahead and grab my phone flashlight and see if we can get some light to come through it. There we go. Ooh, look at that. It's kind of just like glowing center right there, so it's nice and symmetrical. Look at that. You can actually see the pink right there when it hits the bottom now and the difference between the yellows. Let's go ahead and turn it to the side and see if we can get any cool effect there. Wow, look at that. The color differentiation is so much more intense at the bottom reservoir. That is so cool. Let's go ahead and flip it and then zoom in a little bit. Because of the light going through and how many times we flipped it upside down, up here you can actually see 
the bubbles forming with inside of the oils. And this is just oil and water, different colors of oil going through this water, and it's just so nice. And look at the effect it gives on your hands when it's in there. You actually can see the little oils casting shadows as they move down on my hands. That is so neat. It's really interesting the engineering that goes into these things. All of the uh, work that goes into making all these different hourglasses. I've been periodically looking, trying to find more, and this one might not be functionally different, but the way that they added things in here is very neat. And I really like how they sandwiched the ice cream logo in there. There's actually a reflection of the logo on the back of the glass from the inside because they did that. Let's flip it a few more times. I'm really, really enjoying this one. Another cool thing is once you flip it up and down enough times, if you zoom in here on the oil droplets, once you do it enough times, the actual little oil droplets get a lot smaller because the oil starts separating. So by the time you're done messing with it, it actually has a much different effect than it would normally. We're almost to the end. Let's flip it one more time. Look at that. You actually can see the glitter mixed in at the top right here too. You know, going back to this, I have a really big appreciation for these and appreciation for you guys because a lot of the stuff I never would have picked up that I never would have reviewed um, if it wasn't for the channel and for your guys' interest. So I have a lot of these things laying around and sometimes it's just fun to just turn them upside down and I don't know, it's a little bit nostalgic. It's like a adult form of nostalgia especially because it's a form of progress that I've made and I've made with you guys. This is kind of a staple in my channel when I first started these liquid hourglasses. And I think this might be my fifth or sixth one. And uh, I'm just really happy that I'm still able to find a few new ones to be able to show you guys. If you guys are interested in my other hourglass videos, if you go to my main YouTube page, don't forget to uh -oh, subscribe, but I have a playlist that I made of all my previous liquid hourglasses if you scroll down. So feel free to look at all of those as well. But yeah, I really like this one and the glitter is a really nice effect to give kind of that void of kind of nothingness in the background, this nice kind of shiny glittery color. What do you guys think? Do you think that the accent of the glitter is something that has made this, I don't know, an improvement? Or would you say you liked just the oil in here, just seeing the droplets? I don't know about the ones that zigzag, but I do know that this one right here, I feel like it complements it, but it could be just be me. Let me know what you guys think. I think it'd be really nice to get different colored LEDs or maybe like an RGB and let it kind of move through the colors because then they would all change to that specific color that the RGB would be on. Unfortunately, I don't have anything like that. But uh, if I do find something, maybe we could do an RGB version of the um, video with all the different hourglasses. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. How's it going guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. And today we're going to be looking at this cat bottle humidifier. Now this is from Daiso Japan. And if we move this forward a little bit and zoom in, we can see that this is also powered by USB. So it's only about five volts of electricity. And you can see right here on the front, if we get a little bit closer, this is the cat one. And they had multiple different ones at the store. I think there was a panda one as well. But I thought this one was really cute. And as you can see right here at the bottom, the paws actually overlap the little thing from the bottle and like hold on there, which is really cool. It has like a little tiny kind of like imprinted cat face on it. Very, very cute. 
And like I said, this is a humidifier as you see the steam coming up. So this can help a lot when you, you know, you're really dried out or maybe you're sick or something. So it says ultrasonic humidifi humidification. And then over here it says USB powered type. We turn on the side right here and focus in. It says add water to the plastic bottle. It says a small tin fluid ounce is recommended. Attach the head of the plastic bottle and then plug it into an AC adapter. But I'm going to try actually plugging it in to my keyboard or my, my computer. But without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up right here. And it looks like it has one of those little kind of clamp designs. This is what the inside packaging looks like. It looks like the USB is actually a separate piece. It's nice that it comes with a USB and it is powered through micro USB, if you can see right there. So if you still have a cell phone that works with micro USB, you could use this to charge your phone too. So multiple different uses right there. Slide the plastic off. Oh, that's really cute. So one thing that I noticed from touching it is the ears are actually able to move a little bit. They're uh, kind of out of a softer plastic. So it's kind of cute. This is the top portion that blows out the steam. Has a little bit of a sticker on the back. I think we can remove that though. Let's see. Ah, not, uh, not very satisfying. That's okay though. We have a little corner over here. Sometimes you're able to do it the second time if you have patience. Oh, that was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. There we go. And then that right there too. And as we can see right here on the back, if we zoom in right about there, we have the USB slot. So be careful not to get any water into that. So all we have to do is plug this in now. It looks like this actually moves. I wonder why. Does it come off? Oh, this must be to actually make it to where maybe water can go in. I'm not too sure. I'll leave it how it originally was, though. So the wire is... An, it's an okay length. It's a standard length. Let's go ahead and plug that in. You never plug it in the right way the first time. There we go. And when you do, you're like, whoa. <laughs> and then all we have to do get a bottle of water and then we're going to zoom up a little bit there we go let's see did it actually clamp on there all the way now it doesn't seem like it's a tight seal but it definitely went into the grooves so it's definitely on there I just wouldn't turn it upside down or anything now let's grab the USB plug it in and see if we can get some humidity going on there we go. So after a little bit of tedious work, um, I found out that the inside thing, I needed to turn it a little bit in order to allow the water to come up, I believe. And I don't think my computer had enough power, though it could have just been the fact that I hadn't turned that yet. But I plugged it into just one of my extra, you know, USBs for the power plug. And the stuff's coming out. It's humid. It's coming out and working really good, actually. I don't know if you can see that. Let me put my fingers there for a second. The uh, moisture. But uh, yeah, it, it's actually working really good. It's just powering that out there. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's really cool. And I would say that the bottle right here, getting a smaller one would be a little bit smarter. Maybe one of those miniature bottles because this doesn't reach all the way to the very bottom. 
and you probably would want a bottle that uh, does. That you could still use one of these, you just have to fill it up past this point down here. What do you guys think? I think it's a really, a really interesting idea, especially for people who, you know, just want to, like, plug it in by their computer, or they just want, you know, a little bit more, you know, refreshing kind of, you know, humidity by them without having to set up an entire humidifier. But I really like it, and I'm really happy that I bought it. I have a lot more Daiso products that I want to be able to show you guys, so get excited, and I will see you guys soon. How's it going guys, and welcome back to another JHR review. And today we're going to be looking at some Fallout 4 gotchas. Now if you don't know what gotchas are, gotchas are pretty much a gamble of a uh, object and you don't know which one it's going to be. It usually gives a diagram on the back of the ones that are possible to get, but it's kind of the excitement of uh, not being sure what you're going to get and trying to get that favorite one. So, as we can see, we have the classic Thumbs Up Volt Boy on the front. Turning around to the back right here, if we go ahead and zoom in, you can see it comes with a multitude of different ones you can get. We have one with a gun, a kind of like A. We have one with a syringe, and it looks to be a first aid kit. Jump roping. I have no idea, kind of like a put em up a locksmith and uh, kind of like a, a fighting one. Now these are all based on stats in the game that you can upgrade, I believe, on the skill tree. And I never really got that far into Fallout 4, honestly. And I kind of want to go back to it. It says, collect them all. And of course, this is by Bethesda. But if we turn it around right here, we can notice that there is a little rip tab. So let's go ahead and open this up and see which one we got in the first one. So this is what the inside packaging looks like. Let's go ahead and slide this out. So it looks as though we got the lock picking Volt Boy. Let's go ahead and slide him out of his little plastic encasing. And yeah, you could definitely put this on a uh, keychain for sure. And it's actually kind of nice. It actually has the Fallout 4 logo right there. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this guy real quick. Pretty good detail in the uh, design. Looks like it's, uh, what was it, like a resin cast mold. We have the key, or not the key, the lock pick right there. He's kind of showing that he was able to kind of open it. And then we have his feet at the bottom. Looks as though even though he has a lockpick right there, he has a assortment of keys on the back. And it says 2016 BSW, which I'm assuming it's Bethesda Works or something like that. And a very faint barcode and then Volt 111. Very nice, very cute, and be great for a keychain. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, and hopefully we actually have a different one in this. So, as with the other one, let's go ahead and zoom in. We're just gonna pull on this tab. And then let's go ahead and slide it out. And yes, we got a different one. It's always a gamble that we might end up accidentally getting the same one. So this was really lucky. So if we go ahead and zoom in up on this guy, you can see right here that he's kind of a marksman. And uh, he has this little tiny gun right here. Details pretty good on the face, just as like the last one. Pretty smug expression. And it comes with a nice little uh, Fallout 4 little clip right there. So that's pretty cool. I know how they call them backpack hangers, but yeah, do not bring this on your backpack. Definitely not. But yeah, I think this would be really nice on like a keychain. And uh, I'll probably give this to my fiance's mom because she's really into Fallout. But yeah. 
Now I had a lot of requests last video to fill this up with something and uh, see what comes out. So we're actually going to be using what is actually meant to be used for this and this is a uh, clay slip. And uh, as you can see right now it's not really in any condition to be filled with anything. Um, if we zoom in right here we got to get a good look at all of this kind of dirt. So my fiance's mother got this from a woman whose mother collected these for over 30 years and at the time a lot of them were just openly sitting in her backyard and uh, the weather had gotten to them and bugs and uh, enormous amount of things but the thing is a lot of them were still closed so the insides are relatively preserved but they do need a pretty big cleaning so this one doesn't have a particular date on it but judging by the pitting on the outside and the other ones that I've seen, I would probably say this is at least 20 plus years old. But that's just a guesstimation. And if we look at this side, we can see that it is also caked in dirt. And then of course we have the inside right here that we're going to be exploring in just a moment. That's where the slip goes into. And then, of course, the other side's about the same. Interesting thing I did notice, though, is it almost looks like somebody tried etching something in here at one point. Kind of looks like IV, IL, K or something. Kind of hard to tell. But this says uh, Swants, I believe. Kind of hard to tell because the A is uh, a bit skewed by some of this um, dirt and stuff. But let's see what we can do on cleaning this up. So let's go ahead and do the big reveal and open this guy up and see what we're working with. Ooh. Alright, so this side's not as bad, honestly. It does look like we have some spider webs going on right there. Doesn't look like there's any spiders in there. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this real quick. So these are swans. So these are two different swans. It looks like. I'm pretty sure they're not ducks. And um, the dirt has just gotten all in these feathers right here and uh, over here as well. So that's going to be a bit of a cleaning with a brush. And then on this side, it isn't as damaged, but there is a lot of pitting right here because that's where that outside area was I showed you before. Luckily, a lot of that hasn't seemed to have gotten in here as bad as I thought it would have and that's actually just a spider web it looks like it's not a crack so it looks like we can work with this pretty well so let's start off with the side that is the most dirty and then start cleaning it out with the uh, brushes so the first thing I want to do is I want to use the bigger brush in order to try to get off a lot of this bulk because there's a lot of spider webs and just general stuff in here that I want to try and just get off as much as possible. Of course we're going to need to go in here and do a lot more work with an actual smaller brush. I still haven't been able to pick up the ones I particularly want. I found a paintbrush that has kind of a stiffer end to it and I think that'll work pretty good for what I'm going to be trying right here. If we zoom in right here we can see it's doing its job but it's it's still very very minute on its kind of uh, work that it's doing it's not like taking it all off you know it's gonna take a little bit to get all of this clean because remember we're gonna want all look at this look at that we're gonna want all of this completely cleared out of here because any kind of lump or any kind of uh, thing in here, it will deform the design of the actual mold. So if we had like a chunk on the beak right here, we uh, would get a deformed beak. So we're going to really want to get as much as possible out of these cracks. And it's hard because you can't really use water on these because these are designed to absorb the moisture from the clay and adhere so that 
you can get those uh, those designs out. That's what it's meant for. So if you put water on here, it's just going to absorb the water. It's not going to really help you out too much. And then that would make it to where you can't immediately put the clay in after, because you'd have to wait for it to dry. As you see right here, this little tiny section we're actually getting. We zoom in right there. This section right over here. Sorry if I'm bumping into my microphone right there. I'm not used to this uh, secondary setup yet. And my boom arm, or my microphone arm, I normally use is at my main one. So I have my blue snowball clipped onto this table. So it's just really hard to get into these little tiny cracks but the cool thing is is if the first time that you fill this with clay you're actually going to be able to uh, get some of this stuff out of here like it can be a test run and you can get a lot of the um, dirt will adhere to the clay that you put in the first time and then you can just do it again and then by that time you've cleared out some of the gunk that wouldn't have come out beforehand. I don't know if you can see that, it's like almost smoking. There's so much going in there. I should be wearing a mask, but I don't have any. So we're just going to deal with what we got right now. Might be quiet for a second as I try and get some of this out. kind of feels like we're uncovering like a dinosaur fossil or something. I should take a quick camera cut and grab the compressed air and see what we're able to get out of this. Alright, so I used some of the compressed air and it definitely pushed out some of those uh, finer little pieces of dust in these wings. The problem with these little tiny kind of details in these wings is that they're very, very, very tight knit together. So it's hard to get those tiny little pieces of dirt out. But we're definitely doing a pretty good job with what we have. I want to get some thicker brushes and kind of like a toothbrush to try to get some of this uh, stuff in these finer cracks out in uh, later projects. But right now we kind of have to work with what we got. You see, rubbing the brush on here does absolutely nothing. It's so far on there. This one over here doesn't seem to be as bad. So hopefully... This one will turn out better than this one. I don't have a lot of hope for that one, but you never know. It could. trapped right in here. It could also be clay slip that wasn't properly cleaned out last time this was used. We still got quite a bit of dirt in here. So that looks significantly better than it did before. It's definitely not perfect, but it is pretty, pretty good. I also have these which are um, sandpaper and they're good for removing you know larger things like these kind of black spots that we have going on right here you can use the sandpaper to get rid of it you want to be careful on how hard you rub with this like I'm rubbing very lightly in order to get these tiny little black dots off right there you see you just kind of rub very very gently 
And unfortunately, this kind of shape of mold, you can't really use this on here because there's not enough space to have like a flat surface like right here, of course, like if we wanted to get rid of this thing, we could just lightly move the sandpaper on it. We could uh, start to lighten it up, but there's not really a point because the slip isn't going to go on there. The slip's going to go through these holes right here and then fill the inside of this. And as much as I would like to get the rest of the dirt out of these smaller portions, there's no way that we could use this without permanently ruining the... Uh, design on the wing and as for the other side this is the side that I think is gonna come out the best we have some spider webs in here it looks like let's go ahead and pull these off it looks as though this side has been preserved infinitely better like go away the actual indentations of the wings are are very prominent. I don't know if you can see this. Like the shadowing on it is very, very prominent. I'm kind of confused to why one side is so much better than the other, given the fact that they've been clamped together. But maybe the side is just, uh, maybe it's slightly curved out. Maybe they're turning their heads. Because I did notice that this head right here, it is pulled out a little bit more. Because, you know, all the designs are kind of inverted. So you can't really tell all the time, like, you know, unless you're seeing in 3D um, <clears throat> how this is going to come out once the slip is put in. But most of this is, like, just kind of superficial dust on the top, not really anything that's going to dramatically affect. But I'm going to go in a little bit deeper in some of these grooves and try to get out a little bit more of this dust. But this big brush helps for... You know, just kind of the generalization of some of these, you know. Oh, maybe that is a crack. Oh, no, it's not. For the, just the generalization of getting uh, some of the dirt off. Might as well not use a small brush for a big brush job. And then we're going to use the compressed air. And there we go. I think this is pretty decent for the tools I have right now. I really, really wanted to get it a little bit better. But, I mean, there's only so much you can do. This side is going to be so much nicer, I believe, than this side is. Um, but this side is just so much more physically deteriorated than this side. Like, if you... Let's just try to see if we can zoom in on that again. This side right here, you can see just like the lightness and the kind of rounded fadedness of the wing design. And over here we have this kind of crisp look to the wing design. So it's probably going to be half and half, half really nice looking, half really not. Though the secondary design is probably going to come out pretty good. I don't have any, uh, I don't know, bad stuff to say about this, this one on this side. But lock it together. Hopefully it doesn't leak out too much. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this with slip with help with my fiance's mom. And then I'm going to wait an hour and the video will be cut. And then we'll see what is uh, coming out of this. All right, so it's been a little while and I went ahead and filled this with slip right here on the top. And the slip, it's been a while since I used it. So it's a little bit thick. So it might end up being a little bit awkward when it comes out, but hopefully we're going to be able to get those shapes. So let's go ahead and remove this Velcro that we have on the outside and see what we got to work with. slide this one off without having to actually undo it. There we go. Kind of kept its shape kind of interesting. Now, this has been in here for about an hour. Um, it was suggested to me to leave it in here a little bit more, 
but I really think we're going to be able to see the general shape now. So let's go ahead and lay this down on its side and see if we can wiggle these apart. Ooh, okay. Look at that. So it was actually able to keep its shape pretty well. And it looks as though this is the good side, if I'm not mistaken, of the, let me turn this around, of the uh, bigger side, the one that I said had the uh, nicer, and let's kind of zoom in on that real quick, the kind of nicer um, kind of indentations. Let's see if we can pull it out from the other side to get kind of a look and see how our cleaning job did. Yeah, so this was the bad side, but, oh, bent his head a little bit, that's all right. It actually came out. I am super surprised. Let's move their head back just a little bit. I am really surprised that that came out. This thing is very old and very decrepit, but look at this. This can actually be fired and turned into a solid object and painted and everything. How cool is this? And those little imperfections right there that you see, that little line right there, we can actually just file those out and sand it down once it's actually dry. How cool is that? And then back again on this side, we can see obviously this side is the better looking side. But uh, I mean, honestly, I have an entire gallon, gallons and gallons of this stuff. You could mass produce these things right here. So let's go ahead and set this to the side. I'm gonna see if we can lay it back in its little thing. There we go. And then over here we have the smaller one that I already had a feeling would come out better when it came to the details and the feathers. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Popped out of there pretty well. And if we zoom in real quick, we can get a really nice view of the uh, feathers right there. That is so cool. And of course, it's still very dry and I mean, it's still very wet and very malleable, so we don't want to uh, fiddle around with it too much. And then here's this side as well. And all of these edges right here can be cleaned off, of course, and, you know, as I said before, you can mass produce these things. It's very impressive how old this is and how well this came out. But yeah, really, really, really am impressed with this. And thank you guys for suggesting me to uh, go ahead and uh, put the slip in there and see what came out. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. And today we're going to be looking at the difference between these bourbon chocolates and these bourbon white chocolate kind of sticks it looks like. Let's go ahead and set this one down first. We're going to pull this in and take a closer look. So if we look at the packaging right here, it kind of looks as though there's kind of like a wafering on the top. And then there's like some kind of maybe center or maybe that's chocolate on the top and the wafers in the middle. It looks like they're all individually packaged in here, which is really nice. If we turn around to the back, we can get some nutritional information. It says there's 19 grams of sugar, 9 point grams of fat, uh, 9.0 grams of fat, and 40 milligrams of sodium. And a serving size for all that is about four. So that's not too bad gives a cute little diagram on how to open the packaging. And then it has a lot of the other writing in Japanese. So that's this one. Let's go ahead and open it up and pull one out. There we go. I opted to open it the way on the the way that they showed it on the diagram. Let's go ahead and slide these out. There we go. Let me zoom in on them right there. You can kind of see how they look in the packaging. Kind of like a uh, stick. Kind of reminds me of like um, a Kit Kat if they were just um, 
individually packaged. And right here we have kind of the same thing, but these ones have kind of like an outside kind of thing, and it's kind of like a pool of chocolate in the middle, which is really interesting. And packaging is nice and shiny. It gives another diagram on how to open it up at the top, but this one right here, if you look right there, it actually shows how to open the other ones as well, the preferred way, probably to not... Um, mess up the packaging or the candy inside and here at the top if we zoom in on the nutrition 18 grams of sugar 9 grams fat same as the other one 80 grams of sodium on this one per four as well let's go ahead and open it up and let's slide it out Kind of satisfying. These ones are all laid in there really nice. The other ones didn't come out like that. They're all kind of neatly stacked in here. And there's a lot of them too. Looks as though there's actually two of them in a pack. Let's go ahead and set this to the side. Then grab one of these as well. So these are the bourbon chocolate ones. And they're actually double stacked in here, which is really nice. So you get uh, two of them in one pack pretty thick kind of cookie on the outside. And you can see the kind of chocolate in the middle of the wafer. Some Japanese writing. And then, uh, yeah. So these are them side by side. I'd say this one is uh, substantially larger, even though they are both the same price. Let's go ahead and open these up and see what they taste like. the second one. Chocolate looks pretty good. Wafering is uh, pretty crispy to the touch. And let's go ahead and try it out. It's not bad. It's actually, um, a lot lighter. It's not a rich cookie. It's very um, light on its notes. <clears throat> I'd say this would be a really good cookie to have maybe with some tea. Um, the chocolate doesn't have like a really rich flavor, but it is a very good complement to the crispy kind of butteriness of the actual cookie. And as you see there, you get a pretty substantial amount of chocolate all the way through to the end. So that's very nice. And also a bonus that there's um, a second one. So let's go ahead and open this white chocolate one. This one is very easy to open. Kind of hard to pick it up because it's right next to the light, but it just looks like white chocolate. And then it's covered all the way on the outside. So let's go ahead and try this one out. Hmm, very light taste as well. These are definitely um, cookies for like a, maybe like a friend or tea occasion. But um, the crispiness of this wafer on the inside is actually really good. I don't know if you can see that flaking off right there. Look at that. It's really good. The white chocolate complements it at the very end, like a very nice subtle like chocolate note but you do get a lot of wafer taste versus chocolate taste, as you can see. There's more chocolate taste in the other one. But I'm a bigger fan of white chocolate, so I really enjoyed this one. What do you guys think? Do you think you guys would enjoy this one because of the substantial amount of chocolate in it? Or would you enjoy this one because of the nice, crispy wafer covered in that light layer of milk chocolate? Let me know in the comments below. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another JHR view. 
and today we're going to be looking at something a little bit more simple and kind of a short video but I didn't want to pass this up because I thought it was a really unique idea and the cable actually works for my cell phone itself so let's go ahead and zoom in on this brand right here so this is Mochi Eerie has a cute little um, design right here. It looks like that there's a bunny, a cat, and maybe a hamster. It's a USB micro C cable. This is what it looks like. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. It comes in this really nice kind of uh, pink packaging on the side. It says that it's one meter long and that uh, it charges things, um, I guess, on that one. I can't read it, so if we turn it to the back, it gives kind of a generalization of the specs of it, I believe. And then we can just open this up, I believe. There's no tear tab, so we're going to need to uh, cut this one open. So I'm going to pull out the trusty Humvee knife. And make sure to cut away from myself. And then we can close that up. So what's interesting about this, we zoom in real quick. You don't normally ever see yellow USB cables. It's always gray, black, or maybe like a blue. And some of them have LEDs built in, but you never really see kind of a pastel cutesy yellow, which is really interesting comes with an actual little rubber band on here, which can be reused. And then if we look down here, this is the main part right here that I wanted. You get the little kind of cat cupcake, and as you guys know, I really like cats. So as you can see right here, it has two little kind of um, blushy faces on it that actually stick out. And then he's doing kind of like a happy but mer kind of face. If we turn it around, it's just regular, kind of yellow. The material is actually kind of like a soft plastic. Not too soft, though, that it's going to break. The cable is decently long. From here, all the way over to here. And if you don't know um, what a C cable looks like, oh, there's a little face on here too. Very cute. This is what a C cable looks like versus a uh, micro, which has the little prongs on the outside. So it's kind of what all Android phones are moving to. Very cute. And uh, kind of funny, or very uh, paying attention to detail, is they put the face on the exact same side on the opposite end as well, even though it's a cable connected. So it's kind of a neat little uh, detail that they decided to keep in there and make. Very nice. What do you guys think? Do you think that uh, USB-C cables are a lot more sturdy and manageable than micro USBs? I know in my day I've used many micro USBs and they they got destroyed very fast between my PlayStation 4 controllers and using them for my, I think it was my Galaxy uh, Note. It was very, very fast. They would break, usually around this area. But I haven't really had many issues with Cs. I've had a few break, but not as many as the other. What do you guys think? A very cute cord idea. I like it a lot, and I'm excited to keep it around my computer so that I can transfer files and charge my phone when I'm sitting at my desk. A huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.